So now that we've talked about the Java cyclic barriers, structure and functionality and key methods, I'll show you an example of applying the cyclic barrier in practice. And this particular example is a variation of the one that we looked at when we talked about Java countdown latch. It's doing pretty much the same thing, except it's doing it in a way that uses the properties of cyclic barrier as opposed to using the properties of countdown latch. And there, as we'll see, there's some benefits to this approach in terms of the uh, sophistication of the semantics that are provided by countdown latch that are actually not there with, sorry, with sophistication of the cyclic barrier semantics versus the countdown latch semantics. As with the earlier example, this is implemented using an Android app and we use cyclic barrier objects to coordinate the concurrent benchmarking of four different GCD algorithms. I think you remember what a GCD is at this point. And the four algorithms we tested are the same as the ones that we had tested when we had done the countdown latch. So we did the, the GCD method that's defined by big integer, which of course provides us with you know, ridiculous amounts of precision, but it's very slow. We have an iterative Euclid algorithm. We have a recursive Euclid, Euclid algorithm. These are both very common ways to compute GCD. And then the final algorithm is a much less conventional way that uses binary arithmetic with bitwise operations. And turns out the details of these algorithms aren't really important. Although if you're curious to see how they work, you can take a look at the source code. So the main uh, class we're going to start with is something called GCD cyclic barrier test. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a bunch of worker threads that will use cyclic barrier objects as entry and as exit barriers. And this is really going to show off the power of cyclic barrier. It's very cool and does all the things that you'd want for the entry and exit barriers. And I'll also compare and contrast it with countdown latch as we go through the code as well. So here's the main method that's the entry point into the unit test. It's called test GCD cyclic barrier tester. And uh, it's kind of uh, kind of redundant. Uh, the first thing we do is we call a method, a factor method called make GCD tuples. And that's going to basically initialize all four of those GCD algorithms we looked at before and store them in a list of GCD tuples. And then we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves a barrier. And notice that we, we take the number of algorithms, which is GCD tests dot size, because that's the number of algorithms we initialized in that list. And then we add one more to it. And the reason that we add one more is for the thread that's initializing the test and actually going to go ahead and, and run it or start it. And so that's an important thing to remember. When you use barriers, you typically need to have uh, a barrier count incremented for each of the worker threads, as well as for the thread that kind of sets everything in motion. And then we'll see how that all works at the, at the end. Um, you can also see here that we have a barrier action. And what this barrier action is going to do is it's going to initialize the input for the number of iterations we're doing each time the barrier triggers. So basically it's going to bring back all the, the data to work on or update the data to work on for each phase of the cyclic processing that we're doing here. And we also have an exit barrier in addition to an entry barrier. And this also is going to be a cyclic barrier. And this is also going to be initialized with the number of algorithms we're testing plus one. And again, you'll, you'll see in a minute why we have plus one when we look at the way this actually works. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and run this thing through each cycle. So let's say for sake of argument that we've got, you know, we want to run the test 10 times and uh, we might have different input for each time. We might have the same input for each time. It all depends what we're trying to do, but uh, that's what that initialized input uh, method is going to do is between every every phase, it's going to reinitialize the input so that the threads can work and compute the GCD of all the input appropriately. What we do then is for each of the algorithms in the GCD tests list, we're going to go ahead and create and start a new thread. And for each of those threads, we're going to pass in the entry barrier and the exit barrier. So this, this again, if you were to go back and watch the video from the countdown latch discussion, it would look very similar to this. Uh, but there's a very important difference we'll talk about 
when we get down to a, another couple of lines of code. But what we're doing basically here is we're creating something called a GCD cyclic barrier worker, which will be a runnable that will use the entry and exit barriers to coordinate when the threads start and stop for the cycles. And uh, then we'll, we'll kind of see how those work in a second. We then do a print that says, we're about to start up guys. And then this calling thread will call entry barrier dot await. And what's interesting about this use, because this is actually using a cyclic barrier, whereas the countdown latch used a countdown latch, the countdown latch example used a countdown latch. And there's a really important, somewhat subtle distinction between countdown latch and cyclic barrier when used in this model. And the main difference is going to be that the cyclic barrier will make sure that all the threads don't start until they're all ready to start. So it really is like uh, something like a uh, you know, starting block for uh, uh, some kind of a race, like a foot race, like a hundred meter dash or a horse race where everything's going to start at the same time. And so nobody starts till everybody's in position. Whereas with the countdown latch version we looked before, all we know is that the threads can start as soon as the countdown method was called on the entry barrier. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all going to be starting at the same time. It just means that after that point, once they're ready to start, they can start to run. So this is a little bit better. It's a little bit more fair in a, in a sense. And then as soon as we start everything in motion, then the same thread that just started everything will then go ahead and await for all the other threads to finish that particular cycle. And remember, after all the await calls are reached, after all the exit barrier await calls are reached by all the worker threads and by this thread, the, the calling thread, then that will automatically reset the barrier and will also, of course, trigger the, the barrier action to reinitialize the state that will be processed in the next phase or in the next cycle. And the nice thing about this is we don't have to go out and create a new cyclic barrier instance or recreate a new cyclic barrier instance that is built into what cyclic barrier knows how to do. So now that we've talked a bit about the kind of the driver class and the, the driver function, let's take a look at the cyclic barrier worker class. So we have a class called GCD cyclic barrier worker, which implements runnable. So it can be the target of, of a start on a thread. And this is going to use the entry and exit barriers that were passed to it when it was created to coordinate the benchmarking of a given implementation of a particular GCD algorithm, like recursive Euclid or iterative Euclid. Doesn't really matter which one it is, but just that's what we're going to do. You can see that the constructor takes the exit and entry barriers and stashes them away in local fields. And then here's the run hook method. This is the one that's going to be run when the thread is started. So take a look at what it does. All the threads that are all started and all have their run hook methods called will almost immediately block on the entry barrier when they call a wait. So all those threads will now all be waiting, you know, kind of like in the starting block in the road race or the horse race or the, the foot race or whatnot. And that fixes that limitation we saw with countdown latch. So nobody starts till everybody's ready to go. After everybody's ready to go, we then run the test, which, which does the, the particular algorithm. We don't really care what the details are, but we just know it's being run and they're all starting at the same time. So of course, on a multi-core processor, we'd expect that uh, we'd get very accurate timing results, especially if we have enough cores for each of the four algorithms because they'll all literally run in parallel and you can see which one runs fastest or which ones run fastest. As each thread finishes running the algorithm, they will then call the await call on the exit barrier. And that will then essentially block until all the threads are done. And that will also of course block the calling thread because it's also included in the, the exit barrier count if you go back and look at that code. And so when everybody's done, they'll all finish at the same time and then be able to loop back around again and do another phase in the cycle. So that's the end of the overview of Java cyclic barrier. When we're all done with our final discussion, once we wrap up with phasers, then we're going to sit back and analyze the usage considerations and the pros and cons of each of these different 
barrier synchronizers in Java. But the bottom line is if you have a fixed number of threads or a fixed number of parties and you want them to run in cycles, then cyclic barrier is probably what you want to do. And that's also, of course, what you're going to want to do for programming assignment number 4A because you need to make sure that all the beings start to gaze at the same time. So you'll also have to implement the cyclic barrier in the context of assignment 4A.